All right, let's do unit three, lesson five. This lesson introduces variables as a way to label a number in a program or save a randomly generated value. The class begins with the lesson with a very basic description of the purpose of a variable and practices using the new blocks. Afterwards, the class uses variables to save a random number, allowing the programs to use the same random number multiple times. So vocabulary, variable, a placeholder for a piece of information that can change. Variables are very important in coding. However, the concept might not make sense to you for a while. It might take you a week or a couple weeks or a couple months even to truly understand why a variable is useful. But let's get started with this lesson. Okay, we're hopefully going to watch this as a class. If you have a sub, a substitute for the day, go ahead and watch this video on your own. Using variables. Let's click run. In this program, the variable x position is used to store the x coordinate of the circle. Okay, check this out. This is the variable. Okay, the variable x position. Notice how it says var right here. So this block created the variable x position, and they set it equal to 50. It's used to store the x coordinate of the circle. Is this 50? Yeah, just about. If you look down here, the x value says just about 50 in the middle of the circle. Run the program. We did that. Change the number that is stored into the variable. Okay, change this number is what they're saying, and run the code again. All right, so. Uh, let's put it in the center of the screen, and that's about 200, so x position 200. Okay, so let's change it to 200. Oh, it didn't, didn't do what I thought it would do. Okay, well, that's fine. It changed the x position. Okay, so 50, 200. Oh, okay, yeah, because it's the x position. And the y position is 350, which is down here. That's why the x, or that's why the circle didn't go up here. Okay, that's fine. Variables. I'm going to read these because understanding variables is extremely important. A variable lets you store a single value in your computer's memory with a descriptive name. Using variables lets you easily refer to the same value many times in your program or save a number that you'd like to refer to later. Creating variables. We're using this block. The command var will create a new variable with the label that you give it. This variable has the label size. That's the name of the variable. Assigning values. The assignment operator equals will assign a new value to your variable. This command assigned 100 to the variable size. The variable must always be on the left side, so the name of the variable must be on the left side. You would read this command as size gets 100, since size is getting a new value of 100. Any old values that might have been assigned are lost forever. Okay, so you make a variable at the top of your code. Later in your code, you can use this block to set size equal to zero. Then, later, if you want to then set size equal to 200, you would just throw in another block of this instead of uh, changing the 100 to a 200. Using a value. In order to use a variable's value, place its label in the spot in your code you want to use it. This command uses the value in size to set the width and height of the ellipse. Okay, so this is going to be useful in a later exercise okay i am giving you that hint right now so they put the variable size and size in the width and in the height to reference the number 100 initializing usually you'll want to give a variable its first or initial value right away you can initialize a variable in a single command by combining the v var and equals commands. Okay, that makes sense. So that's what this block is. 
After you initialize a variable, you don't need to use the var command to assign a new value. Just use the equals as normal. Okay. Once you use the var block in your code, you do not need to use it again. You just need to use something like this block of code instead. All right. Predict. In which corner of the screen will the circle be drawn? And they want you to enter your answer here. Uh, which corner of the screen? Okay. So we have an ellipse and we have a variable in the x position and we have a variable in the y position. So let's look at the values here and let's look for 300, 100. Uh, so let's set the x to 300. It's right about here and the y to 100. So I'm thinking that the circle is going to be right about here. Let's say top right corner. Let's run it. Yep, top right corner. It's not really a corner, but that's fine. Debug using variables. This program uses the variable circle size. This is the variable to control the width and height of a circle. If you make the circle big enough, it will fill up the entire screen as in the picture on the right. Okay, so this is actually a circle, but it's made big enough so that the, it fills the whole screen. So they put circle size, which equals 450, into the width and height parameters of this ellipse. Let's run it. Okay. So do this. Change the value assigned to circle size so that the circle takes up the entire screen. Okay, so they want us to change the value of the variable. Okay, we want it to be larger so it fills up the entire screen. Let's see if 500 works. Not quite. So let's do a really ridiculous number. A uh, 1,000. Okay, that worked. Terrific. using a variable many times. This program has only one variable called petal size. Here you can see the variable, but it uses eight different times. It uses it eight different times. This makes it easy to quickly makes, make lots of changes to how your picture is drawn. All right, let's check it out. Okay, let's. See. it says it's used eight different times. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Do this. Change the number assigned to petal size so the red petals touch one another. Try to find the size that makes the most sense. Compare your answer to someone around you. Okay. Uh, okay, let's try 100. Okay, they're definitely touching. And I would imagine the, these are petals of a flower, so I think this makes sense. It looks like a flower. But let's see what 75 looks like. This looks like a flower as well. I'm going to keep it like this. I like this. Okay. But notice, let's look at the code. They have four ellipses. Okay. Four red ellipses. Each one using petal size. These are the four ellipses. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you knew that and understood that. Naming variables. Okay. This is important. When you name a variable, variable labels should be meaningful, but you can choose almost any label you like. There are just a few rules to be aware of. Camel case. Labels with multiple words can be easier to read in camel case. A camel case label looks like this. So what you need to notice is that the first letter of the variable name is usually lowercase. Each new word starts with a capital letter. So these start with lowercase letters, but the new words, size of rectangle, of and rectangle have a capital letter. This helps you see the start of new words without using spaces, which are not allowed in variable names. Spaces are not allowed in variable names. Okay, naming rules. We just read one rule. There are a few rules when choosing labels. Labels cannot include spaces, 
So this is an example. Labels cannot begin with a number, four sides, tomorrow. Be very careful with spelling. If labels are not spelled exactly the same way, the computer will not realize that they refer to the same variable. Labels are case sensitive. Size is not the same as size because this has a capital S. This does not have a capital S. And it's not, these are not the same as all capitals size. Debug naming variables. This program has multiple errors caused by bad label names. The errors prevent the program from being viewed in block mode, so the code is in the text. Okay, so I showed you earlier we can view view text or show blocks. Right now, we can't show blocks because there are errors, okay? So it's very important to correct errors. Do this. Find the rule. Find the rule each variable label violates. Correct the errors by picking new names that follow the rules you learned in the last level. Okay, so if you click this hint, it reminds you of the rules that we just learned. If your program works, it should draw the image on the right. Okay, so we should see that red circle. Okay, this is another thing. If you have errors in your code, you're going to get this message. Okay, and nothing's going to appear here. All right, so let's see. Labels can't have spaces. Okay. Uh, oh, this red is annoying. Size of circle. Perfect. This has spaces. It looks terrible. Let's delete these spaces. And let's write in camel case. Because that's good practice. Okay, so we got the yellow triangle. So it looks like this line is fine. Uh, this rule, labels can't start with a number, so this one violates that rule. Let's delete the number. Uh, capitalization and spelling must be exactly the same. This third one looks fine to me. I don't see anything wrong with that. The orange red. Uh, okay, we're still getting an error. Oh, okay, and it's on this line. So if you see a red square, then that means there's probably an error on that line. Uh, okay, what I did is I did not fix the names. So I changed the names up here, but I didn't change the names down here. So dimension, we deleted the one. This, okay, this is up here. Y location has a, uh, a lowercase y. This is an uppercase y. So let's delete that. Put that there. Size of circle has no spaces. And we need a capital O and a capital C. And same thing here. Okay, now it should work. Cool, it worked. Debug variables and random numbers. Variables can be assigned a random number too. This lets you save our single random value so that you can use it as many times as you want in your program. Do this. I size is assigned a random number. Unfortunately, only one of the eyes is currently using it. Run the program to see how it works. I'm going to click show blocks. I like to see the blocks. Okay. Okay, so the left eye is getting bigger, smaller. It's changing size. And that's because of this random number uh, variable. Change the program so that both eyes are always the same random size. Hint, you'll only need to make changes to one line of code. Okay. All right. So, hmm. okay. I see. I see what's going on. So, we want this. The eyes are changing at the same time. Ours only one eye changes. So we want to change the code. So there are some comments, face, eyes, mouth. We want to change the code to the eyes, okay? The reason only one of these eyes is changing size is because one ellipse has the eye size variable, right? This is the eye size variable, a random number between 10 and 60. This ellipse has eye size 
in the width and height. So that's what's making 